And I want us now from this time, I want us to continue with what we call the roundworms. When we talk of roundworms, they are called roundworms because they are round. Just imagine if you have ever eaten spaghetti or macaroni. You realize that the spaghetti are always like, they are like small snakes inside your plate. So likewise, even these roundworms are like that. These roundworms here, sometimes we call them the Ascaris worms. These Ascaris worms, yes, they are also parasites in the body. And they grow from 15 to 33 or 35 millimeters. And they live in the small intestines. You remember, whatever is living in the, all those worms we are discussing that are living in the small intestines, they have a secret there. That is now they feed on digested food. And they enter your body through eating unwashed fruits and vegetables. And how do I, how do, what happens there is that you, the eggs, if those eggs and the vegetables are infected with the eggs of these tapeworms, you realize that you end up getting the tapeworms. Especially if you eat when you have not washed them. You're looking at those fruits that are eaten when they are raw, like mangoes, like oranges. When you go directly to a tree, you pick and you start eating. Or when it has fallen down. Some of them may, may have difficulty there. So, these ones come out through the feces. Now, when they come out through the feces, they multiply. They, they enter your body after you have eaten them, they multiply and they cause a lot of problems in your body. One, they call what to call, they call what to call abdominal blockage. I mean intestinal blockage. They block the intestines. Now, the effect caused by Ascaris worms, which are called, we are calling the round worms, is called Ascariasis. Ascariasis is A-S-C-A-R-I-A-S-I-S, -A -A -S -S, Ascariasis. So, we realize that there are those worms that most of these worms, they are having different ways, modes, how they enter your body. I will bring in another type of, another example of a worm, and I will call it the thread worms. It also has another way how it enters your body. This one enters your body through the barrier feet. Especially when you, end, you start stepping in damp places or wet places, which are dirty, it enters your body. It enters your feet and it leaves the small intestines. And you pass it out also through the body. How do you, how does it affect you? Infect someone. It infects someone through passing, I mean through stepping in contaminated places and in damp places, all those wet places which are dirty or which are contaminated. So in these places here, you realize that they enter when it enters your feet, it, it goes to the small intestines, and from the small intestines, it is passed also through your feet, your stools the soil and from the soil somebody comes what uh, somebody also steps in and it becomes an infection to that person so they feed on digested food also don't forget the fact that these worms are feeding on digested food especially if they live in the small intestine there is a secret there like i've told you allow me come in with another example of worm and that example of another one is called the whipworms. These whipworms here, why are they called whipworms? Because they look like whips. They look like whips. So they are called whipworms, and they have there's something different from them, which people don't know. It has smaller head than the tail, and lives in the large intestines. It is passed out through feces, so when you have them, you pass them out through the feces. And when you pass out through the feces, someone will eat them along with the unwashed fruits. Just like the other one we have so far, we had, we had, we had discussed before with somebody. It's about telling me. What is that? That's the round one. Thank you. We come in with another example of a worm, and we have we call it the gene worms. The gene worms lay eggs in water when an infected person steps there. 
we are going to discuss the life cycle of the spin worms, of the gene worms, the gene worms. I want to begin with someone who has the gene worms and see how they move out. When somebody has the gene worms, gene worms, signs of gene worms, one of the signs that they develop wounds, you develop, they, they develop wounds on the lower parts of your legs. And now those wounds, the adult gene worms are the ones now moving out. Now when you go and step in water, when you step in water, and somebody comes and drinks that water, because we have wells in the village there, where before you collect water, you even step in that water before you collect it. Someone can just intend to go to the well and step, and step in the, that water, and then somebody comes and picks it, and takes, collects that water and takes for, uh, for drinking. Now if you take home such water, or you also come and step in that water, where that person who had the gene worms stepped, those, were, those gene worms, those, when that person stepped, the gene worms will hatch there, and now they will multiply and, and get men in number in the water, and then when you take that water and you drink it, my friend, trust me, you will get the pin, I mean the gene ones. So there we have a, a secret of not stepping in water. Because when you step in water, you don't know, you don't know, you may be, you'll be spreading the gene ones. Now, when they enter your body, they, they go and hatch in what we call the small intestines. And when they leave, the, they hatch in the small intestines, the larva, the lava penetrates and it enters what we call the intestinal walls of the blood. I mean, the, yeah, the, the intestinal walls to the blood. So when they enter the small intestines, they penetrate through and they reach the blood vessels and now they enter the blood. Now, blood moves them to the lower parts of the legs, of the body, which are the legs. Now when they reach there, the, the legs start swelling. Uh, when the legs start swelling, you even burst and develop wounds, which are the very wounds. Now, because now they were already, when they're already in the lower legs, they become now mature adults. Now, the mature ones, they cause what? They cause wounds, and therefore you end up developing wounds. Those wounds are letting those uh, gene worms to escape and they move out. Now, we've so far looked at the gene worms, we've looked at the whip worms, we've looked at the round worm, we've looked at the. the Many others. We have also looked at the hoop ones. I want us also to look at what we call the Bilharzia blood flukes. This Bilharzia, Bilharzia, Bilharzia blood flukes. Sometimes we call them Bilharzia fluke ones. Sometimes we call them the cystosomes or cystosoma. Let's look at the spelling of Bilharzia. B L B I L H-A-R-Z-I-A F-L-U-K-E-S Bilharzia flux or Bilharzia blood flux or Bilharzia fluke worms they like that. Those are worms, by the way, those are worms. The kind of, these are, these are germs, but in the, in, the, in the group of worms. And then another name is called Cystosoma, which is S H I. S T O S O M A or cystosomes. When you reach M, you add the E S instead of A. They are called cystosomes. Here, people have always confused this. When they ask which disease, which disease are you suffering from? I'm suffering from Bilharzia. Bilharzia is not a disease. Bilharzia is a worm. So it is a germ that causes a disease called Bilharziasis. But because this Bilharzia also has another name we talked about as cystosome or cystosoma, it also, that infection also is called cystosomiasis. So, as you move on with the science, you realize that those words, those diseases that are ending with cis, cis, they, are, they always get their names from, the, from, the, from, from either the part that is infected, like gingivitis, or conjunctivitis, or, uh, or, the, or, the, or the germ that causes it. How does one get uh, Bilharzia blood flux or Bilharzia fluke worms? Now, these worms, if one has these worms, 
these worms can pass out from your body through the feces and through the water, through the urine. If this person goes and urinates in the water, in the water body, or he goes and defecates in the water body, these worms will move through the water. Now, when they move through the water, they will be looking, because they will be few in number, they will be looking for where they will go and hatch, and, I mean, and multiply in number. Then they come back and invade the water still again. Now, here we find that they, when they move, they reach what we call a fresh water snail. Fresh water snail. If that water has a fresh water snail, now they will enter that water snail. So that snail will keep them. So they will hatch from there and multiply in number. So we shall say that the fresh water snail is the host for Brihazia flukeworms or blood fruits or cystosoma. So, when they keep their, when they hatch from there and they have now multiplied in number, they will come and now spread again in the water. So, if one person comes and swims in that water, or if, that, if one person comes and picks that and steps in that water, or goes and gets that water and drinks without boiling it, because when you boil, you kill those germs and those worms as such, you realize that those worms will enter your body. Through bathing contaminated water with Brihazia fruit worms, uh, drinking contaminated water with Brihazia fruit worms, or uh, when you step in, when you step in. So, those Brihazia those fruit worms will enter you and they will reach what we call the large intestines. They live most in the large intestines, uh, they live in the urinary bladder, the Brihazia fruit worms in your body, the urinary bladder, the large intestines. And they also live in the veins, blood the, the, the veins. Now when you talk of veins, you're looking at blood. So that's why that's why they also characterize the blood. I think there we shall realize that they feed the, 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 the their life survives on blood. So the Birhazia fruit worms, the infection they cause in your body is what we call Birhaziasis. Remember, I've hinted you on something called the cis. So Birhaziasis and also the O, it is either called Bilhaziasis or another name is called Schistosomiasis. We have so many other worms, but also, uh, let me also hint on another kind of worm here. We have what we call the pinworms. The pinworms are also examples of worms. Uh, these worms here, they are like pins. They are just like pins, just like pins, like needles. They are like pins. These worms here, how do they enter someone? If one person has pinworms, those pinworms will enter what you call the, uh, that person. When you have pinworms, they, most of them, they will come. The female pinworm, the female ones, will come and lay eggs near your anus. Yeah. Near your anus. When they lay their eggs there, at night when you're sleeping. So uh, by the time you wake up or at night, you, 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 you feel some itching around the anus. And automatically you scratch. Yeah. When you scratch, when your hands, your fingernails are long, or after scratching and you don't wash your hands, and you go and eat food with those fingernails not washed, you'll be reinfecting yourself because the eggs of the pinworms will remain in the fingernails. Two, if you have pinworms, if that person scr after scratching, uh, possibly has not eaten, maybe has eaten food or has given food to another person. If you share food, like I always see children saying, please some when you're asking from friends. Never eat food from someone who has not washed their hands. You never know where the hands have been. So that person, when that person eats that food with this, with, with, from someone who, didn't, who had not washed their hands, automatically, you shall you will develop uh, the pinworms. Another way these pinworms can spread from one person to another is through sharing clothes, like underwears, the undergarments, some even some clothes, like even the normal clothes, the outside clothes, the beddings. When you share the beddings, you sleep on the same bed. Like some of you who keep going for sleepover, you sleep with someone on the same bed, 
and that person has the eggs, I mean, has is affected with queen worms, these beddings are also infected with queen worms. So, you develop what we call uh, the queen worms. And these queen worms, they live in the large intestines. So, now, we realize that when you have these pin worms, there's, there's itching of, of around the anus, there's also abdominal discomfort, there's abdominal discomfort, you will have sleepless nights. You cannot sleep when really something is scratching, is paining inside there. And also you'll be restless. You'll ever be scratching yourself, scratching yourself behind the cabina there, behind there. So, here we come and we realize that pin worms are not good. Just like any other worms we have been looking at. Now, how do we control pinworms? How do we control pinworms? Pinworms are controlled by cutting fin long fingernails short, by washing hands after using toilets. Because during the when you when you when you are especially also another way is also by sharing those uh, the same toilet with that person who has pinworms. You have toilet seats at home. You sit on the same toilet. Now, if that person who had the pinworms has left and you also come and sit on the same, you realize that you will pick on those pinworms. Now, so another way is by cleaning the toilet seats before using. Uh, we also have another one here, is by washing hands after using toilets, and also before eating food. I wash and iron beddings. Avoid sharing beddings. Our very sharing clothes. In that way, we shall avoid and shall prevent the spread of pinworms. But also, you do not forget that the worming is also there. The worming comes in, especially those ones who have it. But those who don't have, please, prevention is better than cure. Because cure means you have been infected and therefore you are trying to, 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 to heal yourself. So these are pinworms. Please seek medical advice. Go to the hospital and get treatment. So there are many other ways how we control, general ways of how we control these worms. So some of these ways cut across. We shall discuss them. One, we have been discussing them, but we can, we can please talk about more. One, by boiling drinking water, kill germs in that water, avoiding walking, barefooted or with bare feet in damp places or in the soil avoid touching that uh, touching the soil wash hands after using after touching the soil or digging mm -hmm. better when you're going to dig you go with the gum boots don't share gum don't share don't share uh, beddings clothes you should always eat should always eat well cooked meat. Deworming is also another one, another good one. Proper disposal of feces is the best. Proper disposal of feces is the best. You have seen that many of these ones is because of the way we dispose our feces. So, in general, we realize that our lifestyle is the one that leads us into some of these ones infecting us to that extent. So, you may end up developing what we call deficient diseases because you are eating, yes, you are eating the proteins, you are eating the carbohydrates, you are eating the, the, the amino acids and fast and oils, but we are looking at absorption. When they are term term of absorption, these worms, the ones that live in the small intestine that feed on your digested food, are taking the nutrients. So, we shall see you not changing. We are, we are supposed to see you developing, growing very well, being healthy, but you are not. Reason? Because the worms are taking up your nutrients. Now, can you summarize for me the examples of worms that feed on digested on our food? Looking at that, so we shall know that there are some. There are all these worms. They feed on digested food because they are always found in the small the, the small intestines. Let's look at them. What are they? Uh huh. One. We said we have the tape worms. The tapeworms they feed on digested food. We have the round worms, they feed on digested food. We have the thread worms, they feed in digested food. Mm. We have got uh, we have got we have got those that feed on blood, 
We have the hookworms, they feed on blood. We have the Brahasia blood flukes, they live in the blood. So, we have the responsibility to prevent the spread of these worms in our communities. We have the responsibility, it is behavior in nature. It is our behavior that can help us get prevented from these worms. Thank you for attending. We wish you good luck.